Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the preview show ahead of Huddersfield Town's Skybet Championship game this weekend against Reading. Absolutely delighted to have you along again, and thanks for, for joining us here on YouTube or if you're listening on Spotify on HTFC Sounds. Uh, massive thank you to Sports Broker again, one of our uh, big secondary uh, club partners. Uh, massive, massive thanks to the guys at Sports Broker for not just the support of this show, but their support on town shirts this season. Massively appreciated by everyone here at the club. Uh, delighted to have a, a couple of great guests here with us again today to preview this weekend's game. You'll definitely recognise the man uh, with the hoodie up this morning. It's Huddersfield Town's uh, winger Sorba Thomas. Sorba, thanks for making your, your preview show debut today. And we're also delighted to welcome someone not making the debut, but always welcome uh, the Opta and the Examiners, David Hartrick. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us this morning. No uh, problem. So we'll, we'll come to you again. Thanks for thanks for joining us today. Uh, obviously, we're going to speak ahead of training on Friday, of course. So uh, appreciate you taking the time out of what's been a busy schedule. Um, suspect you're a happy man at the moment, Sober. We spoke for the match day program yesterday, of course, but uh, and you'll be in that for this weekend. But not to repeat all that. But what a start to the season you've had? It's uh, stuff dreams are made of. I suspect when you came into the summer. Yeah, of course, of course. Obviously, for this year, it was all about um, setting my mark, making myself known, and just kind of came into preseason early, just to make a just just to put it in the manager's head that I know I've, I've come I'm playing no games this year. I'm coming to submit, submit my place in the team, and so far so good. It's a it's a funny one, and I, I sit quite near David on match days, and and he pointed something out that's going to be in a piece that he wrote yesterday as well. And we looked from the press box, and we're looking down. It's good to see a load of new town shirts around, and five within our little sphere of the press box had Thomas sixteen on the back of them. That must be a pretty cool feeling when you look out in the stand and see that. No, of course, of course, obviously for me it's it's one and ones where it was my goal when I was at my old team, and it's, it was one of my goals this year as well to just see. A lot of a lot of people just having me on the back of their top, because for me it kind of motivates me and it fries me to to do even better. But yes, yeah, it's, it's a it's a it's an amazing feeling. Who who inspired you? Who did you like to watch growing up, Saul? Because you, you obviously got an exciting style, and I, I listened to David and, and Stephen Chicken on the Examiners uh, podcast this week, and they were talking about the moment of that game being the little flick over the left back's head that you did in the first half. Who 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 inspired you to play in the way you play? Who do you like to watch when you're growing up? There was a lot. Of, to be fair, there was a lot of um, big big uh, ballers that I used to enjoy watching. But I think the main one has got to be Henri. Yeah, I mean, as mm. for myself as a Liverpool fan, you know what I mean, but Henri was someone growing up. My dad loved him, so um, he used to call me Little Henri. <laughs> Yeah, so that like growing up, it was definitely a career, yeah. Excellent. Dave, I don't want to make Sorba blush here while we're on the thing, but we, we've talked and you've talked long and hard about Sorba's mm. impact this season. And uh, it, it's it's no surprise that fans are getting, or the younger fans in particular, are getting Sorba's name on the back of the shirt because it's, it's the kind of player that gets people off the seat that you come, you, you pay to come and watch. Yeah, and I think the, the thing is, everybody loves a player who makes a big difference. And at the moment... To put some statistics on it, if you look at key passes, Sorba, you're averaging about 4.3 a game. The closest to you in, in a town shirt at the moment is about 0.5 a game. So your your streets ahead at the moment. Your chances created per 90. So of all the players who've played 500 minutes of championship football since your debut, you're at the top of that list with uh, 3.2. Emi Wendia is second with 3.1. So you are... You're setting yourself a pretty high bar here, mate, to be perfectly honest with you. And there are other metrics that you're standing out a mile on. You're, you're third for crosses in the division. And the two players above you are, are Jeremy Beller at Birmingham City, who I think is 300, 315 games into his career and in his third year in the championship. And Ryan Giles at Cardiff. And Cardiff are sort of built for a winger to put crosses into the striker. That's literally what they're what their game plan is. So it's no surprise really because you you do stand out a mile as is in that in that town team and long may it continue. I think Sober as well, given you must be delighted to hear those kind of associated with the likes of Emmy Wendia as it was obviously a fantastic player who's got a move uh, to the top division. But when 
when you when you've been asked to do what you've been asked to do this year, that's even more impressive because you've not always played as an out and out winger, have you? I mean, how if we'd have told you when you joined in January that you'd be uh, you'd be making your mark in Usfield Town's team as a wing back, would you believe me? No, no, I definitely not would have believed you. I would have thought I've come here. I did I played a bit of wing back when I was at Boronwood and I thought I'd come here and I'd play in my main position as a winger. And but to be fair for me, um, I'm very versatile. Like wherever the manager wants to play me, I'll play. I'll go there and I'll play. I'll play minimum nine times out of ten effort. But yeah, just for me, it's about getting on the pitch and showing what I'm about, really. And because the manager, if, if that's left wing back, right wing back, wherever he wants to play me, like I'm happy to play there and and show show my ability. Can me just speak to us? Uh, we I thought it were really interesting some of the things you said for me. I don't want to ruin the programme interview because we want people to pick the programme up tomorrow. But uh, you spoke really well of Carlos Corberan yesterday and the impact he's had on you since you joined uh, Sorba. Carlos is a man that our fans are still getting to know, like you, like all the guys who joined us last summer as well. But just give the fans an insight into what how Carlos has helped you and, and what he's like to work for on a day-to-day basis. Yeah, obviously... Um, Carlos is a very is a very passionate man. Um, he's a winner, which for me, it that's what kind of almost attracted me here because I like to win. I don't like to lose. Um, I'm probably the worst loser. <laughs> it's like I need to play under people who want to win and you want to you want to progress. And for me, like I said when I first came, is that I've got ambitions to play in the Premier League, to play. You know what I mean and. I feel like the style of play he's playing now, I feel like it's you're seeing the best of me because mm. it's getting me in positions that I want to play and positions where I feel like I'll be more dangerous when I'm on the ball. But yeah, speaking of Carlos, it's, yeah, he's a, very, he's a very passionate man, like win at all costs. And um, before one of the games, it was like he had like a little, little saying and it was um, do whatever it takes. Yeah, he's he's, he's yeah he's a, he's a massive character. Like the fans obviously won't see this, but if any of the players watch it, they know he's he's one of a kind. He, he, he's before games, he knows how to rally up the team. He knows how to motivate the team with his sayings, with his comparisons, and yeah, he's de- he's definitely someone that I will remember for the rest of my career. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. It's an interesting, wasn't it? Because. Uh, you, you get the chance to speak to Carlos now and again in the press conferences, you know, and he's, uh, I think the passion he has for football comes through again, uh, talking to Stephen the other day and Stephen said how much he enjoyed listening to Carlos talking about tactics in the, in the press conference. He said, I've never seen someone so passionate about the tactics side of football. It were almost thinking to, what's your perception of, of him and the, as a man from, from the interactions you've had with him? I think, the thing about, I think you have managers who are very sort of gregarious and they love press conferences because it's a chance to grandstand a bit and crack a few jokes. I think the thing about Corbyn is he's very much all business. And when you get him talking about that business, he is fascinating, really, to be honest. Um, he is, I would imagine, I don't know this for definite, but I would imagine he is pretty much devoted to the game because I don't think... You can tell the way he thinks, the way he feels. You can see last year it was interesting being in all those empty stadiums, watching him on the sideline because obviously there's no distractions. And you could see you could see when it hurt him. You could see when it delighted him. You could see when he wanted more from certain players. You could see the players he was trying to coach through 90 minutes. He is just an extremely dedicated, massively enthusiastic, but incredibly focused man I think and it's nice that fans are starting to see that this season because it's very hard to get that across in the odd press conference and the odd after game interview particularly when it's been a bit of a tough season as well because the interviews are always a bit stressed and a bit down so it's yeah I think people are seeing another side of him and I think he this season it feels like he's enjoying it a bit more because he's feeding off the crowds a bit more and he's he's happier with his squad and everything else so so yeah i think i think uh i i just the word the word somebody asked me actually recently what's the one word you'd use to describe him and i actually said focus and that's mm. that's how it feels from the outside you're nodding there so is that something you agree with 
Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Focus. When it comes to game day, puts on his game face, literally, mm. I'll probably say, like, literally the whole week, as soon as that game's done, he goes on, does an analysis, and then on Monday morning, he's there, focused for the next game. No, that's good. So, but uh, we, we touched on this when we spoke. I think it was after the Fleetwood game where, where you, you had a really good game in that friendly that uh, that we played. Your unlikely friendship with Jonathan Hogg. And I don't want to say it's unlikely in loads of ways, but people see Hoggy and, and, and you know, the idea that Jonathan Hogg would be friends with anyone that has an amount of flair in the game is probably something that people don't expect. But we, we talked about it since and and it seems that you two have struck up a little bit of a bond there in, in getting to know each other over the last year. Is that fair? Yeah, obviously, um, the fans don't see what obviously us players are see, but... He's not. He's not always serious. Do you know what I mean? I feel like I bring. I bring a bit of a um, a different side out. I mean, um, yeah, yeah. Hoggy, Hoggy's someone. He's he's played. Like, do you know what I mean? He's played that big, big game. So big team. Played in the Premier League. So he's someone that uh, that I've seen that that can maybe help me in my game. And he gives me loads of advice um, on the pitch, off the pitch. Um, yeah, well, do you know what I mean like? Oh, I tried to get him to get into Love Island. But he, wasn't, he wasn't having it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I tried my best to get him into that. He wasn't having it. So, yeah, he's, yeah, Coggy's a, he's a, he's a big character. He's, he's a leader. You know what I mean? And, yeah, he's helped me so far. That's good to hear. And you talk about people, Maxima, I know you've talked about your desire to, to play in the Premier League and your belief that you will, which I think is fantastic. Mm-hmm. Hoggy has done that, and and you look at Jonathan, and he is he has absolutely maximised everything he's got. I mean, the man's thirty two now. He looks like his car from stone. It's embarrassing. I try and not stand too close to him to make myself feel better. But Dave, he's he's a great role model for any player who's twenty two or younger, like like Sauber, to to show what is possible. If you like, we talked about the dedication of Carlos Corbrand to football. I think Jonathan Hogg, in a different way, is a great embodiment of that too. He is, and I think he's. It, what's important is he's also evolved his game. You saw, I did several pieces at the end of last season. He won the Player of the Season, and he had evolved into far more of a passer than he'd ever been in his career as a result of playing under Carlos Corbran. And it, it wasn't passes. It wasn't central defender to Hoggy back to central defender and out. These were progressive forward passes. So that ability to evolve. Um, has been key as well. But Sorby, you keep saying you want to play in the Premier League. In that chances per 90 list, the two players behind you are Emi Buendia, who got his move to Villa this summer, and Michael Elise, who got his move to Crystal Palace this summer. Yeah, it's good that they had um, top, top seasons, do you know what I mean? Um, personally, and um, obviously Buendia, obviously Norwich got promoted, um, Reading also got the playoffs, but... Um, yeah, for me, obviously, I'm just taking it day by day, game by game. And, um, yeah, just, just kind of just play my game every week. And then, you know what I mean, um, try and get Huddersfield to where I believe uh, they mm-hmm. should be. That's in the Premier League. Yeah, that's good to hear, Sober. I think everyone would echo that at those thoughts. We, we talked yesterday about not getting ahead of ourselves, and, and you just referenced it there quite rightly. Reading at the weekend, Sober, at home, I, I, like every team, I suspect winning your home games is a big target. If we can beat Reading, it's been a pretty good start to the season, hasn't it? To, if, if you can get to 10 points on the board going into that first international break, I think everyone would look back in the squad, outside the squad, and say that's a pretty good start. Yeah, of course, of course, of course. Like, obviously, getting get the W on the board is obviously the most important thing. Um, I mean, get the fans smiling. Get the fans buzzing again. But yeah, like, after that, you know, we've got the international break where we can kind of maybe relax. Obviously, we've got some training sessions there to keep us all fit and keep us ready for when the games come back. But, um, yeah, of course, getting to the 10 point, 10 point, get us up there before the international break is obviously going to be massive because, obviously, you know I mean, get people start thinking about Huddersfield now. I mean, that people before the season probably doubted mm. us a lot. We said we're going to be around the bottom and stuff like that. But I feel like with the start of the season, I feel like teams wouldn't want to come to the Don Smith Stadium and they will start start to fear us. Deb, it, we Carlos has talked about this in his programme notes this weekend. He's very aware that 
winning consistent back-to-back games in the championship is is one of, seemingly one of the biggest challenges in football. Yeah. I mean, I think that I'm right in saying that after two games this season, there wasn't a single team in the league mm-hmm. that won both. Um, and going into this weekend, I think I'm again right in saying that only Fulham and West Brom have actually won three games in a row this season. So it's a great target to shoot for there, isn't it, uh, ahead of this weekend? It is. And it's there for town, I think, because Reading, are they've started very indifferently. They lost on the opening day. They beat Preston, who we saw down at the John Smiths, and we know they're struggling. Then they've lost their target two last games. And I watched the, the commentary game at the weekend, and they were... I mean, how they went 1-0 up in that game was, was I mean, it was a burglary, to be honest with you. And they lost in the last minute, but it could have, they could have lost that game 4 or 5-1. So I think, I think Town can, can go for it. I think they can attack it. I, I wrote in my predicted lineup piece, it's a game to get on the front foot because Reading have John Swift, who is the, the league's greatest creator at the moment, five goals and assists combined, which is one ahead of anyone else. But at the same time, they've lost Elise, who was a huge part of last season for them. They've got no rhythm. They're a little bit weaker at the back than they were. You know, they've conceded two more than Town already this season. A Town went for five in one game. So they're very much there to be got at. And I think the Championship is a difficult league to win three games in. But it's it's a game to be as brave as they were against Everton because the the really pleasing thing the really good thing for everyone watching that EFL Cup tie was I know the pressure was off because it's not a league game but I think it was more about coming off a couple of wins the the confidence and the bravery to commit to the press a little bit higher and to keep going for it and to actually that bit of self belief was great and I just want to see that carried into this game too so, but did you feel that on the pitch on Tuesday? I mean, it was, for all intents and purposes, one of our best attacking displays, if not the best attacking display of the season. And I know the result didn't go the way we want, but do you think that's on the back of those two important wins where we had to defend really well in both games? Do you think that allows you to then go into that Everton game and hopefully onwards and show a bit more uh, of what we're about going forward? Um. Yeah, you can say that. But at the same time, I feel like as a player, you look at Everton, you think Premier League, you think, and straight away you think upset. You think, could you be the one that has a bit of an upset? We knew Everton was going to put a strong team out. So um, we got obviously some top players, top, top players playing. And I felt like, like I said um, on my Twitter post, it, I felt like we definitely deserved to win that game. Mm. It was just a lack of concentration, I felt, in the crucial mid- moments of the game, which obviously got us to concede the second goal. But I felt like even after we conceded the second goal, I still felt like we could go and get another one. We could go and get the draw, take it into penalties. But I just felt like everyone's going in the same direction. Mm-hmm. The players, the manager, everyone's going in the same direction. And I felt like, especially with the fans back, it, it's the 12th man, it helped us massively. So. I think, yeah, I just think, like, we just kind of played with no fear. We kind of played with a mindset of we've really we've got nothing to lose, but at the same time, we're coming back-to-back wins. Mm. So if we can make, if we could put, go on a run of wins and add Everton to that as well, it'll boost our confidence even more for Reading. So, but can I just ask you a question? Slightly loaded question. What's Donnell Sanani like in training? He's, he's got a left foot that I feel like everyone wants. <laughs> left foot, it's, it's, it's frightening. How you, like, you think to yourself, yeah, the keeper's going to read this, this shot and then it just flies into the top corner. Yeah. I mean, and I mean, in training, when we'll do like set piece deliveries, you'll come over and it's like, we'll kind of challenge each other. Oh, he's got an amazing delivery as well. You saw that for the Matty Pearson goal, which obviously got pulled, up, pulled aside. But um, yeah, he's he's one of ones. He's like a, he's a quiet assassin. He's, he's yeah. not loud. He's not the loudest person, but I feel like he's someone that will be massive for us this year. Because I feel like he brings something different, and I feel like his left foot is a is a wand. Because he he played sixty nine minutes against Everton, and we were we were obviously all watching to. We've not seen much of him, apart from sort of a great goal in the B team and a couple of little cameos. And you're 
averaging 49 touches a game. He plays 69 minutes, gets 52 touches, has five shots, two on target, two off target, one blocked, which puts him overall for the whole season, I think, puts him in fifth place in the squad and third for shots on target. And he just seemed to be a player that just wanted to be involved in everything. And it was quite exciting to see because I think he maybe asks a few different questions compared to most people in the squad. And the idea of of you and him together, mm-hmm. put, you know, it really confident and really flying in the championship, I think it, it could be really exciting. But he just strikes me, even from that 69 minutes as a player, would be an absolute nightmare to play against in training. Yeah, of course, obviously, you take... As a, if you're a centre half, I'm, not, I hope, I'm, I'm buzzing. I'm not the one that marks him, but <laughs> as a centre half, it's um, you just take, you just like he's not an out and out winger that's going to stand up wide and mm. you're going to know where he is. He, he comes under the ball and it's one of the ones you take you to positions where, as a centre half, you don't know whether to go or not go. Mm. And then if you go, it leaves space for myself or a striker to run into that space that the defenders come out of or if not he gets the ball in a half turn and like you said he, he loves to shoot and you don't you know what I mean if you don't shoot you don't score mm. it seems to yeah, be there's, there's a there's a run of these left footed wingers who come in who you know they're going to try and shift the ball onto the left foot but it's one thing knowing about it and another one stopping yeah. it at an elite level, I and Robin made a career doing that kind of thing. You know, mm-hmm. you can you can list them, and it's it's one thing knowing and another thing stopping for sure. Um, yeah. I want to come back to something you said about Reading, and and uh, you mentioned the start of the season, which is absolutely fair. But I, I look at this a little bit like people did with Derby, where there was a lot of talk about Derby before we played at Pride Park on the opening day of the season about. Uh, issues they potentially had coming into the game and then you look at the starting eleven, and you think there's some good players in that and and mm. I would say the same for Reading there's, you know Reading have had uh, documented issues about you know players leaving uh, I think they've brought two in so far from memory Junior Hoylet being the recent one but then you look through the squad there's some good players John Swift like you said has been a good championship footballer for years and has always been a, a player that causes town problems you look then further back on the pitch and Raphael's a good goalkeeper. Michael Morrison and Liam Moore look a good centre-half partnership. They've got danger throughout the tide here if everything clicks for them this weekend. It's, it's by no means an easy game for town. No, it's not. And one of the in my preview piece, one of the points I've made is that thanks to the start that town have made to the season, a, a draw would not be a disaster by any stretch. To have eight points before this international break would be, to be perfectly honest with you, would be great. But the one thing I would say is you don't have to play them on reputation here. They're 18th in the league and they're 18th in the league for a reason. We are four games in. We're not one game in or two games in. We're four games in. So it is early, but you can start to see patterns forming. You can start to see it with town. So I think all I'm saying is that I think you can play them like they're 18th in the league. And what I mean by that is not expect to win but you can get on the front foot and you can think, okay, they're 18, they concede goals, let's go after them a little bit here. So, but how much do you look at the player that you'll think you'll directly oppose before a game? Because I've had different players tell me different things on this. Some never look at the opponent, they just want to focus on what they're doing. Some really look into, let's say, the left back in your in your position or the right back and think... I think I can get at him this way or he's not very good at this. How, how much research do you do into who your, you think your direct opponent will be or is it just a case of doing what you do? Yeah, I'd probably say it's a, for me, it's a bit more what I do. Because it's kind of like, I know if I'm on my game, I, feel like I know I'll cause, him, I'll cause him problems. And of course, I'll see, I'll have like a little glimpse there and then um, when... They'll send us like the footage of like all the, the, the uh, people in my position that I'll be up against. So um, yeah, it's kind of I kind of focus on myself, but at the same time I will watch a little clip there and then about who the people I'll be playing against, just so I know is what type of player is he? Is he quick or is he strong? Is he agile? You know, so I know what I'm up against. But, yeah, most of the time it's I just focus on myself. Mm. focus on myself and we focus on the team and how we're going to do it as a team to get the three points yeah, that's good to hear as well I'm going to let you go in a second chaps because I realise that we're, we're running on to the 20 minute mark here so but not that you need 
to become more popular with town fans after the season that you've had so far. But you said one thing that will definitely endear yourself to many people. You, you told me you were on. You felt like an honorary Yorkshireman now after your time up in, in Huddersfield so far. So just tell town fans how much you're enjoying uh, life in Yorkshire so far and what you like about it. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, you know me now. I'm a northerner now. This is when I'm a northerner. Yeah, it's just it's so, it's so. I feel like it's so quiet. It's so relaxing. No, it is so so different. I was in Essex, where I mean, I'll walk up my apartment and just like a, a normal like a stranger would just say morning, and it's something like that is just so different. Mm. Because I mean, in in Essex, London, they're probably not saying morning to you. They're probably saying other things that I can't reach really under it. <laughs> you know <what> I mean, <laughs> but you know what I mean, just like a morning from like a, like just a, a normal person on the street, it's. It just shows how different and how probably nicer the people are up here. But yeah, so quiet, so relaxing up here. I'm enjoying it. That's good to hear. Well, uh, yeah, you definitely, you definitely got on a Yorkshireman state. It's like you, Dave, of course, which I'm sure you'd fight against. But yeah, that's uh, that's a good thing. Um, chaps, I'm going to let you go now. Saba, thank you so much for joining us this morning. I really appreciate it. All the very best against Reading this weekend. We're all right behind you. Uh, here at the club, and I'm sure every fan as well. Uh, Dave, as ever, thanks for joining us, mate. Really, really appreciate it, and we look forward to seeing you at the John Smith Stadium on Saturday. Town fans, thanks for joining us again. Just a reminder that if you are on YouTube, you can listen to this on the go on Spotify. If you search for HGFC Sounds or you look on hgfc.com, we'll have your direct link there. And also a reminder, tickets still on sale for this weekend's game against Reading. htafc.com forward slash tickets to get yours. We can't wait to see you for the final time before the first international break at the John Smith Stadium on Saturday. Thanks for joining us.